Unconscious bias is something that is all around us. And as I said in the video, it's not about conscious discrimination. It's not sort of saying that, you know, we're all doing anything in particular, but it's about recognizing the things that we do and the biases that are all around us. But I guess the question for you today is, what can you do about it? What is the call to action? Why is understanding unconscious bias important? And you as an individual, can you make a difference? There are two aspects that perhaps someone working in your industry should be thinking about. When you think about your users, think about the fact that the way you experience a space or the way you interact with, with transport or with infrastructure may be a very different experience to perhaps someone who's a mother and has you know, a number of children or someone who's a young woman and is concerned about her environment. Perhaps think about asking your users, what is your experience in this space? How can we make you feel safer? Asking those questions is extremely important because recognizing that we have biases is also recognizing that we have particular ways of experiencing the world. And that's not necessarily a bad thing unless we think the way we experience the world is the only way to experience the world. So asking the question and realizing that there are different ways to experience the world and that the way we design spaces and we design infrastructure and we design transport systems has to take all of those different things into account, particularly when it comes to gender, is extremely important. In your own workplace, it's also so important to make sure you create a sense of inclusivity. And that is kind of about checking yourself at every moment. It's asking yourself, am I somehow silencing somebody? It's recognizing, and they call it these days, microaggressions, or those sort of unconscious things that we do when we talk or, or when we refer to things that somehow silence others. So that's, for example, when we're talking about users saying, he will do this. Or perhaps it can even take the form of interrupting a female colleague or not subconsciously not listening to a female colleague when she offers some sort of a solution. Constantly ask yourself, how am I making my environment more inclusive? How am I making the people around me, particularly the females around me, feel like they can contribute? Research has shown that there's four main ways that women in particular are silenced in particularly technical areas. One is that their gender is amplified. So say, for example, I walk into a room and somebody says, hey guys, mind your language, there's a female in the room now. It may seem like a small thing, but what that actually does is amplify my difference as a female and it highlights my gender. You might think that you're doing it out of politeness, for example, and that's fine, but check with the person first. Perhaps have a chat with the female, say, hey, do you feel comfortable with this sort of language? If they do, then don't make it a thing. The second kind of way that gender is often highlighted is through what they call using particular gender roles. So say, for example, you're in another meeting and there's some cleaning up to be done afterwards and you might ask the female to do it. Part of you thinks, well, you know, I know that they'll do a better job. You may not intend it to be something that is offensive or something that contributes to a system of bias, but what it is doing is reinforcing those traditional gender norms. The third kind of way gender is dealt with is by tuning out. So I see this happen to me and to other female colleagues all the time. We'll be in a meeting and there'll be all these ideas flowing back and forth and then one of my female colleagues might sort of say an awesome idea. That idea may not get acknowledged until it is repeated by a male colleague. And then everyone's like, oh, hey mate, that's a great idea. What happened there was that female's idea was tuned out. If you notice a colleague being tuned out, make sure that you call it out. Make sure you say, hey, that was a great idea that so-and-so just said. Because it's important that it gets called out and it's important that your female colleague feels acknowledged. That makes a really, really big difference. The last way that gender is dealt with is by doubting their technical knowledge. And as a female engineer, I know that I sometimes have to work twice as hard for my work to be noticed or for my work to be deemed as technically sound. The next time a female colleague offers a technical solution and you feel like you need to check with a male colleague just to validate that, ask yourself why you feel like you need to do that. And maybe think about trusting your female colleague on her technical ability. There are a whole bunch of different things you can do individually in your own space and with the people around you to tackle the issue of unconscious bias and to deal with microaggressions and all sorts of things that build up to create the broader gender inequality that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. Thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to talk to you about this. Rest assured that each and every one of us have a part to play and that you can play your role in making sure that we get to a place of true gender equality. Thank you.